Hi everybody, I'm back as promised. Um, I said I would be doing a tutorial on how I painted that cherry tree, this uh, Japanese Sakura with Brusho. Um, this is a little, first of all, this is a um, sketchbook by Artisto. You can get a three pack of them on Amazon for about $22. They're 30 sheets a piece, not 30 sides but 30 actual sheets they're decent for practicing on they're you know you don't have to worry about wasting your good paper you can just practice away on this paper and some of the paintings i've done but this is the the cherry tree i did um <laughs> i was laughing at myself as i was painting branches i tend to get carried away when i do trees because it's one of my favorite things to paint is trees because how can you go wrong with a tree right there's all kinds of trees out there so anyway, this morning I got to practicing on, uh, I have some very inexpensive, cheap paper that was recommended by somebody I follow on YouTube, and it was a package of 500 sheets of paper. It's not super thin like, um, like printer paper, it's a little heavier, but it's just great for doing things like this, because I'm just going to be sprinkling brush out and trying different ways to do something with brush oh, I don't want to be using my good um, my good watercolor paper for practicing painting sure but not for sprinkling brush oh. um, that would have been a, a lot of wasted paper anyway I didn't love how this one came out but it was a start and I figured I was going to try a few different techniques and see what I could come up with before I actually film the uh, painting of a tree Here's a couple of different things that I tried. The first one, I made some notes. The first one I did by, first I sprinkled the brush out and the color I used is Alizarin Crimson. I think I need, um, I don't think this is the best color for cherry trees, but they do have one called Rose Red that I'm gonna order because it looks more pink. Although this came out pretty pink here, but there are some dark spots, spots that, eh, like here, this, I don't know where that little purple dot came from. But anyway, the first one, this one I sprinkled brush out. I sprayed it um, with this spray bottle that I have that came out, I got this at uh, Sally's, I think, but I think it's for spraying your hair. It was a bit too um, puddly. It wasn't a fine mist spray. But it came okay. It came out all right. Um, I think maybe doing a second layer on it. Um, the second one, I sprayed the paper. And I actually found the the spritzer bottle, the spray bottle that came with the um, box of brush oil that I had bought. Um, this is a bit of a finer spray. So I sprayed the paper. It was a little too wet, so I dabbed it a little bit to get it not dry, but not puddly either. Just wet and I sprinkled the brush out. And then I took a stencil brush, one of these guys, which I have a set of, set of three, made in China, of course. And, oh, I got them from, on Dick Blick, so I was gonna say most likely from Amazon, but I guess I got these on Blick. But anyway, I dabbed while it was wet. This was okay. Um, I think I could work with this method method and get it to work to come out better. I like the way, say, these outer things came out, but I didn't, I don't like so much the solid color in here. Um, I'm thinking I could probably maybe dab the stencil brush in some brush o and just dot another, a second layer, maybe. Um, this third one, uh, what did I do on this third one? I sprinkled the brush out first, and then I just took a brush and splattered clean water, kind of moved it around, and, and um, I took a paper towel, dabbed up where it was puddly, and let's see, number four, which I kind of like, and don't mind my tree branches, I was just playing to... Um, with a micron pen, just putting in some branches and trunks just to to get an idea of how it would look with branches. Anyway, this one, number four, I did, I sprinkled the brush out on 
this natural sea sponge. And I had gotten a package of these. Gosh, I don't remember if it was Michael's or Amazon, but they're just natural sea sponges. Um, they're really small. You can get them all different sizes. You can see I did not wear gloves, and I should have because brush -o stains. <laughs> Found that out. It stained this little brush that didn't come clean. Fortunately, I didn't get it on my clothes. Um, okay, yeah, so I, I sprayed, what did I say again on this one? I, yes, I sprinkled it on the sponge, and then I sprayed the sponge and dabbed. That was it for that one, and then let it dry. I did a couple more, or one more. Um, of all of them, I think I'm liking this one and this one. This one, let's see, what order did I do? Okay, first I sprayed. First I sprayed. I, I This one came out... It was a bit monotone. I added more on top, but it was just all one color, no highlights, low lights. So what I did was I sprayed the paper. I wet the sponge. I actually dipped the sponge, cat hair on my sponge. I dipped the sponge in water. I sprayed brush out on it. Spray got the sponge wet and juicy because I wanted to, um, the color to be lighter. So I wanted to, more water than pigment, right? So wet, wet, dabbed let it dry and as it dried I came in with a little bit more color to add darker layers. I'm trying to figure out how to get it even lighter. I'm wondering, I have an idea that maybe I'll try. Maybe putting brush out in a palette, water it down, very very watery for the first layer and then come in with it on the sponge. Anyway, those are the things I tried. I'm going to come back in a minute with some good watercolor paper and be ready, all set up to, to paint and show you how we can do this. We'll figure it out. Be right back. Okay, so I think we're ready. I am going to, I'm going to mix up some brush. Oh, I cleaned some space off in this little palette I have. Um, I think what I'm going to do to start off really light is I'm going to sprinkle some of this in the palette and then I'm going to wet it down and mix up a light wash. See it's not super pink, it's got reds and stuff in there, but that's okay. It's okay. It should work out fine. Hmm. I might even want it lighter than that. This stuff is really pigmented. It's got a very strong pigment. I'm going to be working in my Etcher sketchbook I figured since I did the cover of it in brush -o, I would paint in brush -o. And this is the next page. Next sketchbook. Make, make sure you can see this. Looks good. I am not a pro. I'm not a pro. I'm making videos, recording, speaking on camera, any of that at any moment. There's bound to be a cat that walks by or a husband that walks in. So let's see what happens. Um, this is experimental. Uh, I haven't painted this before other than the one that I did yesterday in the experiments that I did. I need to stop playing with everything or everything's going to be out of frame. Okay, so I've got my water. I don't know if you can see that. I can't tell if you're... I have my spray. I got my brush out. I got my gloves wherever they went. You know, here they are. I have some of these little cheap food service gloves. There were two of them over here. Why is there only one? All right, well, I suppose I only need one. I know there's another one. It's probably, I'm probably sitting on it. Who knows? So let's take a little sponge. And I'm going to dip this sponge into the light wash. It doesn't look so light to me, guys. It really doesn't. I'm going to water it down even more. I'm looking really pink. And you probably can't see this. I don't know. You probably can't. But I'm just spraying more water into the palette at this point. 
I mean, it's light, I guess. I have to think about how I want this tree. Uh, these trees kind of tend to grow out really full and kind of long, maybe off to one side. So why don't we think of doing maybe a trunk here and we will, that's nice and light. Do the tree and you want to, um, you don't want to do your sponge just one direction. You want to make sure you leave white space too because you want to be able to show some branches in there. You don't want it all just one solid color of pink. Okay, I'm going to make this come out a bit that way. And I, I have a hard time with trees. I love making branches, but what I have a hard time with is um, getting them to be not symmetrical because my trees always come out looking like, um, I don't know, not like trees because trees, trees grow in whatever direction they want and they don't care if they look like a circle. I've been looking at pictures of these trees online trying to get a feel for how they grow. So, see the hair? I can't do anything without cat hair in it. I'm going to let it dry down just a little bit. Do I want it fuller than this? I don't know. Trunk's going to go up. And I think it's going to grow more out than up. Oh, that doesn't look right. See, I'm ruining it. I'm going to ruin the shape. You do your shape. Don't try... Don't try to do any shape I do. Just do what you think a cherry tree looks like. Maybe if you have a cherry tree that you can go look at, or definitely look at some pictures online because they, they don't grow. They grow kind of, I don't know. Now see, I really could use this second glove and I'll tell you why, because I need to hold the sponge in my other hand. So. Let me try to find that. Well, this is drying for a second. I'm going to put you on pause for one little second, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with my glove. Just in case I lose it, I brought the whole box. <laughs> I got these at Sam's Club. It was three boxes of 500, so I have 1,500 gloves. So I think I'm safe if I lose another one. What do you think? All right. Let's put this glove on. You know it's going to bug me until I find what happened to the other glove. Don't you hate that when you misplace something? It's all you can think about. What did I do with it? What did I do with it? Okay. This sponge is still a bit wet. This looks like it's drying. I am going to sprinkle a little bit of brush out on here because now we want to darken it up a little bit. Let's see if that's going to be a little darker because we want highlights and low lights in our tree. We don't want it to be just one color, right? We want to have different colors in there. I don't necessarily love that reddish color that's coming out. This, this thing with brush out, um, some of the colors are mixed or a mix of several colors so you you can't really control what goes where and right here you can see that I spilled some on the paper and I'm just gonna brush it um, blow it because I don't want it to activate like crazy right there so I like this this is um, this might be a good way of doing these trees I think dab a little here and there. If you want it to look like the light is coming more from one side, you can make one side lighter. Let's get this little random purple. Oh, here comes one of the cats. Sophie? She's going to walk right through. Sophie? <laughs> Sophie, move along, kitty cat. Go ahead. You leave your little fingerprints. And if you really want texture in your painting, you can get your cat to walk across it 
while it's still wet and see if you can't get some special little paw prints. That's always cool, right? That'll make your painting unique. So I think that's enough color for my tree. Um, I don't want to go too dark with it because they're really not dark trees. So I don't know. Let me dab some of the color out. Ooh. I don't know if you saw what just happened in the water. I want white space, but I don't want this much white space, so I'm just going to try to um, close in some of the white space, I guess you would say. Oh, here comes my cat again. Sophie, you can't. No, no. Go on. Go, 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 go. Sophie. Ugh. Why me? Okay. Well, I don't love the shape of the tree, but I mean, it's a tree. Maybe we'll have some come down this way. <laughs> that was even worse. <laughs> Why don't I just cover the whole page in pink? All right. I'll let that dry a little bit. I don't want to start painting in the trunk yet because the, um, it'll bleed, the branch color will bleed into the pink and I don't want, I don't, bleeds are nice sometimes, but I don't, in this case, I don't want black or brown running into the pink of the flowers. So I'm looking for, I have a push pin somewhere. It's probably hanging out with my glove. With Brusho, a tip I learned about Brusho um, is you really don't want to take the covers off of these because they will, this stuff gets everywhere. It'll explode everywhere, and it takes such a tiny bit to, to um, they're really crazy pigmented. So what you do is you take one of these um, thumbtacks, a push pin, and just make a hole and keep it in there. When you want to use it, take it out and sprinkle it, and that's all you do. You get the, the tiniest little amount is more than enough. If you need more, you can always sprinkle more, but you don't want to sprinkle too much. One thing I've noticed about Brusho is that it seems, and what I'm finding is that once it's dry, it's not really movable. So, um, you know, like with watercolor, look at this, I got this here. With watercolor, you can lift the color a lot of times, especially if you're using good paper, but this stuff really stains. Let me see if I can show you right here because I'm not gonna be able to get that color off. And that's the way it goes in a sketchbook. All right, um, for the trunk, I'm going to use my Mei Liang paints. This little set that I got on Amazon. Um, this is a set of 52, I believe. I think I can take my gloves off now. We don't need to hear me rustling around. Take these off. I don't think I care if they get lost because pretty sure I'm done with them now. Um, okay, get that brush away from me because it's going to stain my fingers. Uh, for the, the branches, I'm going to use my, I think I'm going to use my black velvet, um, my silver, yeah, my silver black velvet, size four and size eight. I don't know if I'll use both or one over the other. I just have them both out. Um, you could use a micron pen. You could you know, use different micron pens and go in there and just draw the branches yourself if you wanted to, if you're good with that kind of thing. Um, I like doing branches that way, but in this tree, I think I'm gonna paint my branches. Sophie, come on, Sophie, get out, 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 out. No, Sophie, come on, go. I'm sorry, my cat just wants to walk through. She loves me and what it, I don't know if any of you guys have this palette, but it drove me crazy the way the the swatch card was set up because the rows were just not in they went out this way they just didn't make sense. So what I did after I swatched is I cut each strip and I put them in the order that they're actually in in the palette <laughs> because. It was, like I said, it was making me crazy. And then I can fold them down to, you know, if I just want to use one row, I can see them that way or 
it just I don't know it just made more sense to me it's working out well and for my trunk I think I will use yeah that clip is gonna get in the way the binder clip so you probably not gonna be able to see what I'm doing here let me see what's in the key. all right can you see the palette I can see I can only see the first row so how's that gonna work Let's see what we can do over here. I can move this way. And I can put the palette over here. And hopefully, it just keeps wanting to slide because I'm sitting on a, um, a glass mat and I have it open this way and it's leaning on something. Maybe maybe if I don't lean it on this. I have it leaning on my, on my brush -o. How about if I do it like that so it doesn't move? I told you. This is not something I do all the time. Am I good? Am I good? Can you see that? Most of it, anyway. Okay. At least you can see what colors I'm going in for. Maybe I can get this clip for now. Just lay it flat like that because I'm not painting over there. And so these are my browns. I think yeah I'm just gonna use the browns so raw umber maybe maybe I'll start out with the um, burnt brown and then add in darker one two three four five six that's a six one two three four five six that's that one I'm just gonna wet my browns spray them Make them up a little bit and wet my brush and really when it comes to painting your tree trunk you know it's a tree trunk and you know what I noticed since painting and noticing color and noticing things that trees are not brown they're actually kind of gray so maybe I should make gray. This ivory black looks like I could water it down to a gray. This coal black, yeah, maybe I'll take that. Maybe I will go into this little palette here so we can, we can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna take this, uh, this black and I'm just gonna water it down and make it a gray because yeah, trunks, tree trunks are not brown they're gray seriously go out and look at them I'm not kidding so yeah well now I have a brownish gray that works too right you want to have branches and I think um, you want to have some branches coming off the trunk like this only paint branches this is why you needed to leave some white space. I'm going to put the brown and the gray together, I think. You only want, you wanted to leave white space because you don't, um, you want to put branches where you can see white, where the white is, you know, where you normally would see. If you look at a tree, it's not just covered in leaves. It's, you can see branches in there. You can see, look inside the tree. There are branches. So, look at the color. Look at look inside. It's not just <laughs> that's pretty. It's not just um, leaves. You can see the branches. I like um, at this time of the year before the trees start to bloom, because I like to look at the trees and the way that they grow, what they look like underneath their leaves. I like to see the naked trees and and look at the way the branches grow. Um, they're just some such cool trees and I am a tree nerd I can't tell you what kind of tree something is but and I think I want to use a bit thicker pigment as I'm going up into the trees because uh, yeah and I'm gonna mix the brown oh this darker brown might be good yeah this darker brown is good 
Yeah, okay, we'll do that. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to imagine that the center of the tree and the leaves are going to, I mean the uh, branches are going to be thicker towards the bottom of the tree, right? As you go higher, the branches get thinner. But you can see, we can see this tree peeking through the leaves. We can see the trunk of this tree, I should say, peeking through the leaves. And it's wide. We want to make sure it looks believable. We don't want a skinny little tree trunk. You know? So. I hope I'm not blocking. So yeah, I'm not probably going to stay with you for the, um, you know, all the branch painting because I think you can take it from here. Um, I'm not going to be doing anything amazing or mystifying or anything. I'm just going to be painting in my branches now. I just wanted to um, try using the brush out because I have it and I just, I never use it and I think it, it's a product, it seems like you can do some really neat things with it. Um, so I thought I wanted to. I saw so many people painting cherry trees. Uh, seriously, all this, this week, it seems like all the people I follow, everybody's painting cherry trees. And I watched a lot of tutorials and thought, oh, I can paint a cherry tree. You know, I haven't been painting, well, I guess I have for a few years on and off and I wanted to do a cherry tree and they thought of the brush out and I don't know just hit me that there really are no hardly any brush out tutorials if you look there's very few um, tutorials on brush out there are books you can get it's not a lot so I just thought it might be fun to play and it was, but it's messy, guys. It just, I'm warning you, it gets everywhere. So be very careful, very careful that you don't, you know, protect your clothes, protect your work surface, protect your, um, your hands, wear some gloves, don't lose them. <laughs> you, your nails will get stained. And if you have a nice manicure, like I don't, you might not be too happy with staining your fingernails. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to continue playing as this, this painting is going to develop. I'm going to work on this trunk because I don't love it, but I will. By the time I'm done, I will love it. Um, I'll post a picture at the end and I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope. I didn't ramble too much. I'm just going to dab that a little. It's kind of dark there. But yeah, paint and just put your branches in where they feel like they make sense to you. And try to put them in a direction where they would make sense. They're going to be growing out from the tree. And these trees, they, they seem to grow out. So make sure that if you're putting things over here, they're not pointing up. Or if you're putting things up here, then up, you know, you know what I mean? Like kind of follow the direction that the branches would be before you put them down and um, make them look like they make sense. Okay, so I, that's it. Um, happy painting. I hope you have fun with this. See you in the next one. Bye. So this is it finished. It's all nice and dry. I did add a little bit more pink in here. Um, I added a little bit of a washy background with what color blue? The cobalt blue. Um, I really, really watered it down. What I did was I wet the background and then I just um, didn't paint the color all the way to the edge, so it got so I had got soft edges instead of um, hard edges, and I splattered some pink like little um what do you call flowers on the ground and every time i put a tree i put my husband and my initials in the tree
So let me know if you give it a try. Have fun.